now that we are fully geared up let's work on the mob switch and how we're gonna do that is that we're just gonna fly i don't know like 5,000 blocks away in order to make sure that no one accidentally interacts with it okay we're almost there and this is about 5,000 blocks away let's get our uh, shulker box of working stuff and let's see what's on the other side oh hey oh this is totally gonna work out <laughs> Welcome to Kikakor, where safety is a concern. In the previous episode, we talked about Villager Breeder in the end, but we're going to use this in a more interesting way. When villagers become zombie villagers, they become persistent, which is a very unique case when it comes to enemy mobs. See, enemy mobs will typically start despawning after 32 blocks distance from them. Zombie villagers, after you trade with them for the first time, or if you're in hard mode, will stay persistent. And what that means is that they'll count towards the mob cap wherever it is. And as long as the chunk itself remains loaded, then they'll count towards the mob cap. So this is the basic premise of a zombie villager based mob switch. So when villagers breed, they'll come out with a new baby. For the sake of this example, I'm just like yeeted them into the void, but don't don't worry about that. Over here is where they'll be collected. Now, let's say that a villager then breeds a new baby villager. They'll eventually grow up to an adult villager over here. This is going to go into an interesting mechanic when it comes to minecarts. Given enough velocity, minecarts can go through glass blocks when they're going uphill like this. By doing so, because the hitbox of the minecart will collide with the hitbox of the villager, it will then pick up the villager. Then the villager will get brought up to here if I could just demonstrate that real quick and just like that the villager is now in the minecart now over here we have Kikikori's consigliere or consigliere I actually don't know how to pronounce that we have the zombie and right now Bob is considering whether or not to get this workstation the Bob then turns into a Fletcher in which case if we secure a trade with dear old Bob over here right now Bob has traded which means that his trades are locked in when you're in hard mode this isn't a necessary step however it's always good to err on the safe side and just trade with the villager if you can because these will be persistent enemy mobs that'll count towards a mob cap and if we lose them well it kind of defeats the purpose once we open up this trap door bob will then get hit by this zombie when bob turns into a zombie it will remain persistent because remember we've already traded with bob bob is now forever a zombie villager unless we cure it. and uh we're not planning on curing bob and so this is one towards our mob cap now the reason why we would want one to exist in our mob cap is because once that mob cap becomes at full capacity the game will not make any more hostile mobs why would someone want this i mean doesn't most farms run on hostile mobs well yes however when building sometimes you need an area in which you need to build safely such as the nether or parts of the overworld let's say you're working on a gigantic structure but don't have a means to light it up yet for whatever reason this is where mob switches come in it makes construction projects a lot easier now for the purposes of this episode we're going to be creating a mob switch for the overworld using zombie villagers and so let's get to it quick interruption i know that only 10 percent of you actually subscribe to this channel watching this long i must be doing something right so if you like this video hit that like button and please subscribe to this channel any support helps and these videos take a bit long to make thank you so much and back to the video all right now that we've prepped the area for the village breeder and the mob place Let's construct this area in which we can make the mob cap room filled with the zombie villagers.
now that we finished the entire build of this place, we have ourselves our first villager. And how this is going to work is that we need to make sure that they are able to stay in the world. But in order to do that, we need to do a single trade. And so we're going to make them into a Fletcher, do a basic trade using all the animals that we got from the Void Trader and get 70 of them into this small enclosure. Let's get to it. After what seems like an entire day, we're down to last person. Been keeping track with both a book and emeralds. So this is the last guy. All right, he's gonna get converted to a zombie. That'll be it, 75. You know, when I look at this, this doesn't really look like 75 zombies, but I guess it is what it is. So right now the mob cap is being <laughs> incredibly overtaken by the amount of zombies there are, which I think is super cool. But this is only the first half, which means I'm only halfway done because I need to do one more over in the nether. And <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that and like that 12 some hours of me doing this, which thankfully you only see in a time lapse if it worked. If you're seeing this, then and yes, it worked. If not, then whoop. And one last thing before we continue, I accidentally placed that way too close. So the chunks are supposed to be four away because the first three layers are so active, but the fourth one is a lazy chunk when you use a chunk loader. So we're gonna set up a chunk loader on this side for now, but we're not gonna activate it just yet. So the way I create my chunk loader is a little different than most. I use an item based chunk loader, which for some people is a little heretical, but for me, it's just easier to set up and I like using it because I can put it up and take it down anytime I need to. It's all personal preference, really. If it works, it works. How you set it up is that right underneath another portal, what you want to do is put one facing whichever direction and the other one facing into it. Then taking a couple of rails and two hopper mine carts, which I think we still have, you want to take your hopper mine carts, just plonk it on top, one on each side. Then from here, you want to put down droppers upwards until you get next to another portal, and then place one facing into another portal. You know, the side, just put up something to block it. Come back down here, grab your comparator, point it this way into a block with a redstone on top, and then a redstone lamp right on top of that. Then from here, place on your observers facing into those two. And that's really all there is to it to set up a chunk loader using items. Now, like I said before, there are better ways to do this. You could use the rail based chunk loader. I prefer just using this, mostly because it's just easy to reset just in case if something breaks. And if you want to just double check if it works, just plonk the thing down just to see if it goes up. And then you'll see this repeat over and over again, which means that it is working. If you want to disable it, put a lever down, activate it, then you'll see that the dropper itself will hold the item for you. And for now, we're just going to take it back because we don't want that to be active just yet. And then we're going to go to the other side. All right, now that we're back on the other side and both portals are linked, we're going to create the nether mob switch. But we're not going to use zombie villagers. Oh, no, 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 no. This time we're going to use shulkers. 